Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to the basic orbital mechanics. In the previous video we discussed uh, the forces acting on a satellite which contribute to keeping the satellite stable in a particular orbit. The centripetal and centrifugal force, their mathematical expression, also the mathematical expression of the orbital time period and the velocity of the satellite. So in this video, we are going to discuss another very important, very, very important concept which, which forms the foundation, we can say, of uh, satellite technology. Okay. So this is the Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Okay. So there are three laws, uh, first, second and third law. And uh, it forms the foundation, the basis of uh, the study of satellites. So Johannes Kepler uh, gave a set of three empirical expressions that which which explain planetary motion, okay, the movement of planets around sun and all of that. So the these laws, three laws combined together, they're called as Kepler's laws of planetary motion. So there are first, second and third law. Okay, so Kepler's first law so according to the first law okay kepler's first law it says that the path followed by a satellite around earth okay or around a planet it will be in the shape of an ellipse okay elliptical path or a elliptical orbit okay so the path followed by a satellite around earth or any other planet it will be in the shape of a ellipse elliptical path and the center of the earth will lie on one of the focal points of the ellipse okay so let us say this is an elliptical path and it has various other parameters such as the semi-major axis which is the apogee the maximum distance of the satellite from the center of the earth in the perigee and this is the semi-major axis from the center to one of the extremes both the sides it is same this is the semi-minor axis the smaller one small b small a is the semi-major axis small b is the semi-minor axis f1 and f2 are the two focal points of the ellipse so what the first law kepler's first law says that the path taken by a satellite around earth will be in the shape of an ellipse and the center of the earth okay the center of the earth will look will be located at one of these two focal points it may be at f1 or it may be at f2 Okay, the center of the earth will lie on one of these two focal points. So this is Kepler's first law and there will also be cases of circular orbit. So basically circular orbit is a special case of elliptical orbit. So in order to understand circular orbit in terms of uh, elliptical orbit, we have to consider another parameter which is eccentricity so eccentricity and semi-major axis okay they are very important two important orbital parameters so eccentricity is given by the expression root over of a square minus b square by a okay square of the semi-major axis minus square of the semi-minor axis root over divided by the semi-major axis this is called as eccentricity so when eccentricity lies in between 0 and 1, we get an elliptical orbit of different shape and size. And when eccentricity is 0, then it means A is equal to B and it is a circular orbit. Okay. So here the elliptical orbit and circular orbit, they can be 
derived from this elliptical path in terms of the eccentricity and the semi major axis A and the semi minor axis B. They are related to that. So, this is Kepler's first law. Next is Kepler's second law. So, Kepler's second law it, it says that for equal time periods, okay, in equal time intervals, a satellite will sweep out, will cover equal areas in its orbital plane. Okay. So, we have already discussed about orbital plane, basic concepts related to satellite orbit, satellite trajectory. I have already discussed in the previous videos related to satellite communication. So, you please watch those videos first so that you understand these things in a better way. Okay. So, what Kepler's second law is saying is that for equal time interval in equal time periods or equal duration of time, a satellite will cover or sweep out equal areas in its orbital plane. So, what the it, it is essentially saying that suppose for a given period of time t, the satellite it covers distance s1 and s2 respectively. Okay, let's say a satellite is moving in this elliptical orbital path and for equal time t it covers let's say in the first for him from here to here if we measure it was let us say it covers distance s1 and again we measure here it covers distance s2 in equal time intervals okay the time period is same it is covering distance s1 in the first case in the first measurement in the second measure measurement it is covering distance s2 so what Kepler's second law says that the line joining the center of the earth and the satellite that will cover equal areas. Okay, The center of the earth and the two positions, the initial and final position of the satellite if we join, then the area which is subtended, okay, the area which is formed by the joining of the lines from the center of the earth to the two positions of the satellite, the initial and final position of the satellite, they will be the same. A1 will be equal to A2. That is Kepler's second law. So, you please understand this. For, for a particular duration, let us say we take the first measurement, let us say we consider a time t, t equals to 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, let us say the satellite it covers distance s1 let's say i'm saying 100 meters i'm not i'm just saying 100 meters it is covering in this case and in this case it is covering distance let's say um, whatever 150 meters okay 150 meters for the same 10 seconds again we take the second measurement it is covering let's say 150 meters so what it is saying kepler's second law is that even though this distance is covered by the satellite they are different but the area covered by the satellite this area subtended by the movement of the satellite which is given by the line joining the center of the earth to the initial and final position of the satellite from where the measurement took place we started the countdown t 10 seconds that will be the same a1 will be equal to a2 you take any time duration, let us say we take t equals to 20 seconds. The distances will vary, but the area covered by the satellite, the area subtended by the two positions of the satellite, it will be the same. No matter what value of t you take, it will always be the same. If we take t equals to 100 seconds also, the distances will vary, the distance covered by the satellite will vary in those t equals to 100 seconds or whatever seconds, but the area will always be the same. Area uh, covered by the satellite will always be the same. So, this is Kepler's second law. Next is Kepler's third law. So, Kepler's third law, it says that the square of the time period of any satellite, time period is the total time taken by the satellite to complete one orbital path 
one complete movement around the planet earth that is reaching it's let's say it starts from here it completes one orbital path and reaches its initial position that is final position is the same as initial position so the time taken by that for that is the orbital time period so the square of the orbital time period of any satellite is directly proportional to the cube of the semi major axis okay for an elliptical orbit the semi major axis is this okay this 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 distance from the center to the larger extreme the, this larger distance that is the semi major axis small a and this is the semi minor axis okay so according to kepler's third law the square of the orbital time period is directly proportional to the cube of the semi major axis for any satellite in an elliptical orbit that is t square is directly proportional to a cube so if you remember in the previous video we derived the expression for time period of a satellite for a circular orbit and elliptical orbit by balancing out uh, first we determine the expression for velocity by balancing out the centripetal and centrifugal force and then for uh, a circular orbit with total distance equal to the circumference 2 pi r we determine the time period so if you compare this the time period we have this expression 2 pi by square root of mu a to the power 3 by 2 for elliptical orbits where a is the semi major axis so if you see here this kepler's third law is getting proved t square is directly proportional to a q so from this expression of the time period if you see if we take this the the fractional part the 1 by 2 which is there if you take to the left hand side it will become t square so it is getting proved so for elliptical orbits we have derived the time period is equal to 2 pi by square root of mu a to the power 3 by 2 where mu is the constant value which is the product of universal gravitational constant capital G and the mass of the earth and for circular orbits that is 2 pi by mu into r to the power 3 by 2 where r is the radius of the orbit for elliptical orbit it is the semi major axis a for circular orbits it is the radius of the orbit so in both the cases this kepler's third law t square is directly proportional to a cube it is getting proved so this is kepler's third law okay the square of the orbital time period of any satellite is directly proportional to the cube of the semi major axis so here we have discussed about the three laws of uh, planetary motion proposed by Johannes Kepler Kepler's first law then Kepler's second law and Kepler's third law so I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much